Hey guys, it's Rick. Welcome back to the HD Vibe channel. If you'd like to see more tips, tricks, rides, reviews, installs on my Harley Davidson Touring Motorcycles, as well as information about motorcycles and the motorcycle community at large, I ask that you please hit the subscribe button. And when you do subscribe, please leave a comment down below saying I subscribe so I can personally reach out and thank you for supporting the channel. Also, so that you don't miss out on any content, please hit the bell icon so that you do get notified every time I put out new content. So today we're sitting here in front of the 2019 Road King Special. And what I wanna to do today is help those that may be considering buying a Road King Special or those that already have a Road King Special, give me your thoughts and inputs as to what is the good, the bad, and the ugly with the Road King Special. And we'll get into it right after this. So guys, like I said, I wanna talk about the Road King Special. And this really is for model years 2017 to 2022. There's not a whole lot of differences between all of those model years, except for when you went to the 2019 model, the engine did change from the Milwaukee 8107 to the 114. So just a little backstory on how I came to put this motorcycle, the 2019 Road King Special, in my garage. Back in late 2019 or early in early 2020, I decided after seeing somewhat reviews like this about the Road King Special that I wanted to add that to my garage. When I started looking, I knew that I wanted to go with the 2019 model year or newer. So the 2019s were certainly available still in late 2019 or early 2020, either as new or used. And then the 2020s um, had just come out. Um, and I ended up getting this motorcycle, and I believe it was in February of 20. So a funny story. So I was looking, scouring. I generally don't like to buy new motorcycles. I usually buy them one model year old to have low miles. And that's what I did on my Street Glide Special. So, I wanted to take that same approach with the Road King Special. So I looked and looked, and I actually found one that had a lot of the things that I would probably add on to the motorcycle anyway down in Miami, and I was gonna fly down to Miami uh, for business anyway. I checked in with that dealership, it was a used dealership, and by the time I checked in, that motorcycle had sold. It was listed at a very good price, and I knew it would sell quick, but I thought, well, I'm gonna be down there in the next couple of days, I'll call them, maybe they'll hold it and I'll check it out. Didn't work. Long story short, I came across this motorcycle, um, I think it was on either Cycle Trader or one of those sort of online cycle where people list used motorcycles or new motorcycles for sale. And I found this one online at a used motorcycle dealership in Houston, Texas. So I did live in Houston for a while and I still have a good friend of mine that lives down there. So I thought, well, a good opportunity. Um, the bike, at least online, was priced right. And I have a friend down there. So if it all works out, good. So as it ended up, um, I talked to them on the phone, sight unseen. I said, I, I put down a deposit and I said, I will be down there next weekend. So I rented a trailer, went down there um, and purchased this bike. So the funny backstory on this is this motorcycle was actually won by an elderly lady that lived in Louisiana at one of the casinos. Obviously she didn't want the bike. It was actually delivered, I think from a, a dealership either in Houston or in the New Orleans area to her, to her house. So she didn't want it, this used motorcycle dealer bought it from her at some price and then they offered it up for sale. This bike literally had, I think, seven miles on it when I picked it up at this used dealership in Houston. Um, I drove down one day, got up on a Monday, picked the bike up and drove back home. Come to find out, for whatever reason, even though this was a 2019 and I think they typically have a two-year warranty, this one had, I think, maybe an extended warranty. So when I took it to my local dealership here in the St. Louis area, it actually had three years of warranty on it. So it was an awesome deal. Um, the deals are out there. 
So if you are looking for a used bike, just keep lurking. I know in today's market, the prices have gone through the roof. I, I got fortunate and bought this one when prices, um, and I got a really good price on this. I won't even mention it, but needless to say, if I wanted to sell this in the marketplace today, I could make some money on it. That's the backstory and how this ended up in my garage. And now I want to get into really the good, the bad, and the ugly of these Road King specials. Start with the ugly, and there's not too many things in my mind that are really ugly about it, but one of the things that I didn't really like is the gas cap and fuel gauge configuration. On the stock setup on the Road King Special, it actually has a big chrome gas cap on the right and a fuel gauge uh, chrome on the left. So it sits right up here on the bike on either side. And if you've seen my upgrade video um, on this bike, you will see that I changed that out. I actually changed it out to flush mount, fuel cap, and gauge. Um, it was a pretty easy install. Unfortunately, I can't show you how to do that now because it is in already. But check out that video and I'll have a in card or a link to it in the description of all the upgrades I've done on it. But that was one of the ugly things I thought. I didn't understand why they put these chrome gas cap and gauge on this black, completely blacked out bike. Um, it just didn't make sense. So the flush mount to me, I think looks very good. The other thing, which is not terrible in the grand scheme of things, but the latches on the bags were actually chrome as well. Um, I don't understand why on a blacked out bike, again, they put chrome. Um, so I actually changed those out. And again, that's in the upgrade video um, that I did uh, a few months ago. Um, but I changed those out to black. So that's the ugly, there's not much. I mean, this is a, an excellent looking bike. I think right out of the, the factory on the showroom floor, these bikes look tremendous. So now let's talk about, in my opinion, what are the bad things about these bikes. So first and foremost, I think the stock handlebars are awful. Um, they, I've moved mine back. I still have the stock bars on it. I don't know if I'll ever change it or not, but the wrist position is just, it's odd. Um, they are sort of mini apes. I think they're eight or nine inch mini apes that they put on from the factory, but they're, they're sort of the angle with which you, you hold your wrists are at a weird angle. Um, and I think it's different. These bars are different than what's actually on the Road King classic or standard or whatever you want to call it. Um, so it's certainly not something that's comfortable out of the gate. I did pull mine back just a little bit because I do have a, a shorter arm reach, um, and so I kind of like that having my arms a little bent. Um, they are higher, but again, it's your wrists are really cocked out, um, which is uncomfortable. And I actually found that I had to adjust my, my turn signal, the housing here that has the mirrors. Um, I actually had to rotate them down slightly so that it wasn't an awkward position to turn on the turn signals or um, activate my horn. Um, so I did do that. Again, that's pretty simple. I think if you have one of these bikes, you know that it's just a couple bolts here loose and then you can just rotate this back. Um, it also helped with the position of the, the brake and the clutch. So speaking of the brake and the clutch, so for whatever reason, this is a hydraulic clutch still on the 2019. I believe in the 2021 model years, they went to the cable clutch. My 2015 has a hydraulic clutch. I will say this clutch, for whatever reason, it engages way farther out than on my 2015 Street Glide Special. And I think in some cases, that's why they actually change to the cable clutch. I, I don't know, I haven't tried the cable clutch. I, I did look at one at a dealership um, in the spring or the early spring or summer of last year when I was down in uh, Florida. From a feel perspective, it felt, I wasn't riding the bike, but it's still pretty stiff. Um, I've gotten used to it, but it is, it's unusual. And anybody who gets on these, these Milwaukee eights um, from 17 to at least 2020, when it's still a hydraulic clutch, it is a weird um, change from what the hydraulic clutch was on the Mount Ru on the Rushmore uh, models of the touring line. 
So the other thing um, is the lighting. Now I think in 20 and 21 they may have upgraded the headlight to an LED um, headlight but one of the first things I did with this bike is I changed out headlight and turn signals with LEDs. They still had the halogen headlight and the incandescent bulbs in the turn signals which to me if you were you're buying a brand new motorcycle having that old of technology it, it's just mind-boggling and I think that's certainly a, a bad on Harley Davidson for putting these pretty expensive bikes out with this old 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 technology the mirrors um, I don't have stock mirrors on here I replaced them with a Harley Davidson mirror that's more of a, a sort of a teardrop I can't remember the the actual um, model but I will put that in the description but the stock mirrors are the same stock mirrors I think they put on the Road Glide Special and I think also on the Ultra Limited and from a rear view perspective it is very limited and I did not like it and so that again was another thing that I changed out pretty early on when I got this bike. So next I'll talk about the exhaust. Um, I will say the stock exhaust on these Milwaukee 8s is better I think than what was on the twin cam, one, twin cam 103s but it's still not great I mean I think everybody knows that when they buy a Harley Davidson probably one of the other first couple of things that you do is, is change out your slip-ons to get a little more of that Harley sound to them and this is no exception although I will say it's better um, than what the twin cams were but still not great and I think that falls into the bad category and then I think the other thing in my mind that falls into bad category is the suspension my gosh the suspension on these touring motorcycles is awful so on the Road King Special um, it does have the standard 12 inch Harley stock suspension that you can adjust by hand I think on the left or the right side with that dial um, I changed out the suspension on the 2015 Street Glide Special because I do ride with that one uh, more two up. The Road King Special I don't ride two up so it's not as bad but it's certainly it's it's night and day difference. Um, I actually put Legend suspension on the rear of the Street Glide Special the 13 inch model which then sags to a 12 inch stance so Essentially, they stand about the same still, even though you put a one inch longer shock on it. But it, it, the, the ride is night and day difference. And the suspension on these things is just awful. And I don't think that matters if you're getting a Rogue King Standard, a Rogue King Special, a Street Glide, Street Glide Special, Rogue Glide, the Ultra, even the CBOs. The suspension is no good. Um, so that certainly falls into the bad category in my mind. So let's move on now to the good. Um, I, there's a lot of good. I mean, I think this bike is such a, an aesthetically pleasing looking bike. I mean, I think Harley Davidson did it upright with this blacked out look. Um, as I said, I think some of the aesthetic things you can correct through um, accessories through the P&A catalog of Harley Davidson or either other parts manufacturers um, like lighting and, and, and things, mirrors, all the like, handlebars. Um, so you can change all those things out, which obviously you don't necessarily want to do that, but I think we all change our bikes and customize them to fit our needs um, over time. On the good side, I think is this 114 engine. Um, as I said, I specifically wanted to get a 2019 or newer um, because of the 114. And I will tell you, this 114 engine compared to my twin cam 103 that I have a complete stage one on including headers and a tune on this thing will outrun it any day of the week um, the torque that comes off of this 114 engine and again mine is stock there's no cams there's I'm working on the stage one we're in the process of doing that I still need to put the headers on but this thing will just flat out run I mean it's not going to be the fastest bike in the world but for me, having both the Twin Cam and the Milwaukee 8, it is really night and day difference. And people ask me that all the time, the people that I ride with. And it, it does, it makes a huge difference. And the torque 
that comes out of this engine is incredible. Um, I can't even imagine if it, you got it tuned really tightly and you put some cams on it. I mean, I've seen other people do that. It, it's gotta be a, a monster. So the, the downside, I guess this I could have put in the bad or the ugly, but I actually did have the something issue on this motor at about 500 miles. Um, it was disappointing for sure. Um, I thought they had gotten that all worked out in the 17 and 18 model years, but mine had it. So if you are looking to buy one of these uh, in the pre-owned market, I would suggest one checking the oil level um, before you purchase it either from a dealer or from an individual and also um, get your Allen wrench out and open up that transmission case and check the level on the transmission because that was my issue. I had oil transferring from the transmission to the primary and I went after riding and at only 500 miles I rode a pretty hard day with some friends came back and checked it and my transmission oil dipstick was completely dry. Everything had transferred over to the primary side of the engine and I had literally not enough oil to register on a dipstick in the transmission side. So fortunately Harley Davidson, it was still under warranty, I towed it into my local dealership and they installed the vent kit. Um, and the vent kit, you can go out and Google it and find it on YouTube, but it essentially they drill into the primary they put a little rubber tube in there that is, is held in there solidly and it basically just relieves that pressure between the transmission and the primary so that that oil stays balanced in there and doesn't get sucked over to one side or the other. So knock on wood, I haven't had any issues with it since they did that. I check it on a regular basis um, after I get done riding just to make sure that everything is good. This bike also has, I think with most of the touring line, but it, it has the anti-lock brakes. It also has the linked brakes. So I think if you're over 20 or 25 miles an hour and you put on either the rear brake or the front brake, the front and rear brakes link to one of those and will activate both at the same pressure. Now, when you drop under that, you can just use the back brake or the front brake. Um, so that's good for low speed maneuvers, which I like to do to practice and keep my skills sharp. Um, so that is really a good aspect, I think, of these bikes. And that's really one of the reasons that I bought the 2015 Street Glide Special, because it did have anti-lock brakes and it did have the linked front and rear brakes. It's a great feature, I think it's a safety. And now, on the newer models, you can get the RDRS. Um, so that sort of helps with, you know, when you're going around curves and putting on brakes and, and helps with your hill management. You can lock the brake and not have to put your foot on the brake if you're on a steep hill before you, or an incline before you take off. So another great feature that was not available in 2019. Obviously this one does not have that. So this bike obviously is part of the touring. Now I think Harley Davidson calls it the grand touring line. So it obviously has a touring chassis. So, I mean, it, if you really wanted a, great looking bike and you wanted to take this out touring, you can do that. I mean, this bike is comfortable. Um, the stock seat is acceptable. You've probably seen, and I'll again put a link in there, I changed the seat on this one to the Saddleman um, Pro Series SDC seat. Um, a great seat, but it's certainly not set up for long distance touring, but I will have a video coming out soon where we'll talk about another Saddleman seat that is probably more suited for the long distance touring that people may want to do. But with this chassis, um, it, it basically has the same wheelbase, the same size uh, front and rear tires as you would find on a Street Glide Special or a Road Glide Special. Um, it is great, from, so you can take this out of touring. You can put all the attachments if you have a uh, aftermarket tour pack, you can get the quick disconnect, you can add that on there. You do have the stretch saddlebag, so you, there's plenty of space, or you can just strap, strap on some gear on the back and go. And I think with the addition of a windscreen like I did here, I added the wind splitter on this. Um, you could tour all day long on this bike without a question. Um, obviously you don't have all the electronic um, aspects in terms of the infotainment system. You don't have GPS, um, all those things. But what I did was I actually got the Harley Davidson 30K wireless headset. I put it on my helmet 
connect to Bluetooth on my phone if I want to listen to music and it just comes through my helmet. So that's an option as well. So I think the last thing I want to talk to uh, about, or I want to talk about on the good side of this is really this bike is super nimble. Um, this bike weighs, I think, wet around 800 pounds. Um, it is certainly lighter than a Street Glide Special or your Ultra Limited or Street Glide or your Road Glides, probably by maybe 100 pounds because it doesn't have the front fairing. But this bike, in terms of being able to whip it around, being nimble, even though it is a big bike, um, I find that when I'm doing slow speed skills, weaving, quick stops, sharp turns right or left from a stop, this bike to me is more nimble um, than the Street Glide Special. And I feel actually more comfortable of whipping around the front end of this bike as compared to the Street Glide Special. And I think obviously there's a lot less weight up on the handlebars, um, so that's good. But I will say if you're comparing it out on the highway, um, obviously you get a lot more wind protection from a bike that has a fairing. And I think that fairing also kind of pushes that front end down a little bit as that wind's coming across that fairing and, and creating that pressure. But again, I have no problem. I ride this bike on the highway all the time. I've had it certainly at highway speeds and maybe a little bit above highway speeds um, because this thing, like I said, with that 114 motor getting in six gear, um, it will run at fairly low RPMs at 70 miles an hour. I mean, I think you're at under 2,500 or maybe 25, 2,700 RPMs at 70 miles an hour and six gear. Um, so this thing, you can really, really go. And with the red line, I think at about 6,000 RPMs, um, I mean, this thing, it goes. Um, so that's my thoughts on anyone who's thinking about buying a Road King Special. If you do have a Road King Special, I ask that you kind of drop your thoughts and comments down below so that people can kind of see your perspectives as well as they're thinking about maybe thinking about buying uh, a Road King Special or things that you have done upgrades on that I haven't talked about or maybe covered on one of my other videos. Put that in the comments so we can kind of share this in the community and uh, get perspective on this Road King Special bike. So. What do we have coming up? Um, we're gonna finish the stage one upgrade on this bike soon. I just couldn't get to it this week between trying to put it on, the headers on, and film it. Um, I just didn't have enough time, so we jumped this one in line. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this to get some perspective. And I wanna leave you with this. Life is short, get out and ride the bike. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you on the next one.